Have you ever wondered what the alternatives are to getting signed to just a record deal? If so, you're not gonna wanna miss our next interview with Sam Taylor, Vice President of A&R at Cobalt Music, right now. Hey, it's Rich Ezra coming to you from MUBU TV. We're coming to you live from the Muse Expo here in Hollywood. This channel is dedicated to artists, bands, musicians, and music business professionals of today and tomorrow. We managed to catch up with Sam Taylor, Senior Vice President of Cobalt Music Publishing. Sam, thank you so much for joining us. Great to see you. It's great to see you. Now, Sam, Cobalt has a unique place in right. the music business ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, you're very innovative in terms of music publishing and recordings and label services. Right. So what I wanted to get is if you could talk about some of the qualities or some of the aspects of the company that make it a unique choice for right. artists and bands. Well, I think, you know, let's be honest, the, the biggest thing is you owning your copyright and, you know, you owning the rights to your uh, publishing, which is, you know, something I feel like in the era of writers and producers and artists, that's the main factor of your business, you know what I mean? You, you should always own your rights. So um, I think we're very unique in the sense of that and also unique in the sense of, you know, we've grown probably in the last, you know, two or three years, whether staff-wise or even, you know, roster-wise. So the service that we now provide to the writers and producers is way higher than maybe what it was before previous. You know, always had an incredible catalog, but now, you know, we've, we've taken a lot of new chances and, you know, put a lot into everything. Today, the marketplace is so radically different than it was three to five years ago. Vastly. And given that, can you talk about what your criteria is for seriously considering taking on an artist or a writer at Cobalt? Right. It's, fu it's funny you ask that. I think because our deals are shorter, we obviously, uh, you know, our focus is writers and producers that are already kind of moving. But that doesn't take away from the fact of what the true, are, you know, a and R essence from the heart is, which is finding something that's from the gut or, you know, the diamond in the rough. And, you know, I think it's, it's kind of, it's double edged, you know, at the same time, finding something that's so early, you know, it takes maybe a couple years for that person or artist or whatever to develop. And at that time, you know, because our deals are shorter term, you know, you hope that they make the great decision to stay, you know, and if it's not broke, you know what I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So in that sense, I think that's where we differ. We, you know, we, we go for things that are already kind of in the movement, as you would say. Okay. You know, in listening to you, I, I'm, I'm struck by the, the, the dichotomy of it, I guess, right. between the artist and the, and the person that you said is, is greatly talented, but, you know, the years that it takes. And I'm wondering, the question I have is, can that talent develop themselves right. without the assistance of a publisher. Oh, absolutely. Today. Okay. I, I mean, that, and I, if they can, how? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. Almost probably 50 to 60 percent of things that are being signed, they've already kind of made noise on their own, you know, and, and, and it's either a situation where maybe you add to the relationship, meaning, you know, they may have gotten to this certain level and maybe need to get a relationship with these people to make it bigger. But you know, everything's so fast now. You you know, it's it's not I guess you would say back in the old days of AR where you had to grassroot it and build it, build it, build it. Things are kinda of doing it on their own and by the time you get to it, the legs are already there. You're just helping it move faster, I guess you would say. Yeah, people call that amplification. That right. Labels and big publishers, they're amplifiers. Amplifiers. Yeah, they're amplifiers. amplifiers right. They can amplify, right. but and, they and, 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 it's, and it's a good and it's a bad. It's, it's a good because obviously, you know, you catch something and it's already kind of has lightning and you're just going with it. But it, you, as an a &R, you always want to be from the bottom, bottom, the ground up. So, you know, you play, you juggle with both sides of it. As a as a vice president, senior vice president of A and R yeah. at a big company like that, where are you finding your talent today? Is it through the natural sources? Is it through the market? Is it through referrals? Right. Is it through all of the above? Or how me, are you? Me personally, it? I'm very natural. Whether it's word of mouth, whether it's me finding it, um, I'm not the huge research guy. And the only reason I'm not very, I'm probably going to differ from some of the new people, but I'm, I'm very different in the sense of. 
I don't like just going to look at stats. Because at the end of the day, you know, let's be real, we went through a phase where some of these stats were bought, some of these stats were, you know, fudged. So you don't really know. So I still go from the gut. So it's, you know, whether it's referrals or whether it's just, you know, you stumble into it, hot word of mouth, friends, good stuff like that. The, the research aspect of a &R is very tricky. It's very tricky because these numbers can look way different than, you know, what the actual artist is. We'll see somebody with a bajillion YouTube views and you listen to it and you're like, wait, like, is that, you know, worth all those, all those views? And now it's all opinion based, but at the same time, you don't know how those numbers got that high. Yeah, it, you know what's interesting about that, Sam, for, for me is that I come from an A&R background. Right. And I worked with Clive and... Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Here's the thing. In those days, you signed 100 acts, 10 to 12% of them Work. happened. Right. Today, the giant companies tell you, you need the natural forces of the market right. to tell us if you are worthy of our attention. Right. Here's what's fascinating about that. You did 10 or 12% back in the day. Today, those stats really haven't gone up. Maybe they've even gone down. It might have gone down. Labels yeah. are actually signing their, their, their success ratio. Right. So I'm, I'm thinking, that, you know, gut mm. and instinct has to have a higher role. No, it's got to kick in. In, in this, that because stats are not, I yeah. don't care if you got two or three million views in social media. It's not telling it the whole story. Otherwise, I think that the, the success rate would go up a lot right. higher. I never, personally, I never judge an artist off of their Instagram or Twitter. Because at the end of the day, that's, you know, it, it's funny. It's tricky because you can see somebody with 2 million views, and then they'll drop an album, and it'll sell 20,000. So you're like, why didn't those 2 million people that are following you buy 2 million? But it's, they may just like hearing you talk, or they may just like seeing, <laughs> seeing the banter that you have back and forth, and may not care for the music. So it still all comes down to the music. You work at a company that's very innovative as we started at the top of the conversation. The blending of publishing, administration, right. label services. Right, right. I see the business going this way. I mean, Cobalt is a classic model of the new innovative industry. New what do you think has brought this on, where publishers are labels and label services right. and independence? Right. What, what do you think has caused well, this? Well, I, I think, let's be honest, it's been a resurgence with artists now that, you know, they're tired of probably giving up everything to be with the major label. So for them, they're looking at it like, okay, we did this on our own. We got this buzz going on our own. Why should we give everything up to the label and we, you know, sit back and make pennies off of it? So I think our new distribution, it gives you options on, you know, so many tiers to be able to maximize the revenue of the hard work you put in, you know? So, you know, it's, it's definitely a further conversation, you know, once you get into that world, but it's the conversation of most artists nowadays either want to be independent or control their own fate, you know? And I, I think when you, when you do go to the major label, obviously, let's be honest, there's perks there, there's a big budget, there's a, you know, huge staff, but because everything today is almost free through social media, you can kind of control that yourself and then be able to control your fate as well. Okay. Um, Cobalt has a program uh, which has recently been in the press that they're putting a lot of time and money and energy into called AWOL, which mm. is Artists Without a Label. Right. Can you talk about what that is? I think right. our our audience would be very interested in that. Okay. Again, that's going back to kind of what I was... AWOL is the artist's way to stay independent and still have the benefits of a major to a certain degree. And, again, to own more of your masters. So, I think that avenue for independent artists is a huge platform because they no longer have to feel like they're just giving away everything. Is, is AWOL... So I take it that if you can own your own masters, you have to come to them with a finished record. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. Pretty and then much. A wall basically decides what they're going to sign and what they're going to put money into. Right. Based on the finished product. Based on the finished product. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Based on the finished product, and then I think there's you know, you'll have there's different tiers to how much budget you can do with marketing and do with you know digital uh, digital looks that you get from that as well. Okay. Yeah. 
in your experience, Sam, what do you find are the biggest mistakes you find new and beginning writers and artists are making in the marketplace over the last three years or so? What do you see from your angle? I think one of the biggest, it was, let's start from a writer's yeah. and producer standpoint. I think, you know, they aim for certain albums. And to me, the biggest mistake you'll do as a writer and producer, if you're aiming for a certain artist that's, you know, an established artist, don't go back and listen to their last album and give them things that's reminiscent of their last album. Because let's be real, every artist wants to move forward. Every artist wants to create something new. So when you do that, you almost cripple yourself going in because if I'm an artist, why would I take something that was a hit from my last album? I want something that's going to reinvent me or make me, you know, catch catch the whole audience off guard. So I think that's probably one of the biggest pitfalls. On a publishing sense, I would probably say, and, and this is just being honest, jumping in and taking a huge advance. I think being smart with how you come into these deals, um, you know, let's be real, it's a loan. The same as the same as, you know, a credit card loan or anything, you're gonna have to pay it back. So I think betting on yourself and being confident and, you know, at, at the same time, like, say if you come in and you're a writer and you have a song that's getting ready to hit the charts. So, you know there's revenue there. So I would be smart and maybe maybe take half of the advance. I wouldn't go crazy and take, you know, a bajillion dollars because in a year, when that's ran through, you still owe that money. You still owe that money. And, and no matter how great or fair the deal is, when you take an advance, an advance is an advance. So I think just being smart about going into deals, making sure that, you know, they favor you, obviously, which is, I think, the great thing about Cobalt is that our deals are just fair across the board, you know, and, and, and even time-wise, you're not stuck in a deal for life. That's another pitfall mistake. I think you sign a deal and then you don't look at the after part of, you know, maybe when your deal ends, the retention period of knowing how long that company still gets to eat off of your publishing. You know, so I'm sorry, I'm getting deeper. Not at all. Yeah. What would you say is the right amount of time that somebody should be looking at if they're going to be signing a deal, time-wise? Time-wise, definitely three years. Three definitely, years. Definitely okay. three years. So Which three is, years. You know, and I'm speaking biased because ours are three years. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I definitely think three years because that gives you and the company enough time to be able to, let's be real, it's a relationship. So we got to fill each other out, you know. You, you hope that both sides do, you know, 50-50, whether it's the company helping you be able to get into things that you couldn't maybe before creating the relationships. And at the same time, you being able to perform and, you know, get hits, I guess you would say. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, my next question is, is more on the talent end for you. And right. that is, you have a scenario, you found somebody, you love the music. Right. Now, let's talk about all of the non-creative, non-musical aspects that you're looking for. I'm curious to get you to articulate what are the personal qualities that you're looking for <laughs> in right. a person right. or an artist or right. a producer that make you say, yeah, this is somebody I want right. to do this with, right. or you know what, Th this isn't for me. I'll be very real with you, work ethic. Work ethic is, is to me, 100% key. Because again, I keep stressing relationship. It's a relationship between the publisher and the writer. So if I'm going 100%, you should be going just as hard because this is inevitable. This is your career. So the work ethic, um, it's funny because let's be honest, most creative people, they have their quirks, you know, whether mm -hmm. some are, you know, some may go into a writing session with the attitude of, I don't want to see anybody, I just want to write by myself. Some may have the attitude of, I love people in the room. And so it's a little tough to say, I, nobody wants to do business with somebody that is uh, a jerk. But, you know, it, creatives have a different mind state. So you, you, you know, it's, you almost got to give or take, but you know, you, inevitably you do want to do business with a good person. I don't care if that's music or anything else. But biggest key for me is the work ethic. Because, perfect example, you come in with a hit, you have somebody with a hit. I don't necessarily judge off of that hit. I love to obviously meet the writer and producer and hear the rest of their music because at the end of the day, the hits are there. The hit's gone, it's on the charts, it's already gonna make money. It's what's following after that. And it's knowing that I can do something with what they've played me or they're gonna be able to do it a la on their on their own, which you don't want. But at the same time, if you only hear that one song 
you got to know that next three years is going to be a struggle, not only to get that money back, but then also in the relationship with the writer, they're going to be calling you like, hey, can we get in with this person? Can you put us with this person? And you got to know you're not confident in putting that relationship with another artist knowing that, that you know the writer and producer may not have anything else. Yeah, or may not be able to deliver the goods. May not be able to deliver the goods. And that's your reputation. That's right. That's cobalt than I am. Right. And that's, yeah. and that's just a pure, pure reality, just, you know, just being honest. So the work ethic is crucial. Work ethic is crucial. Absolutely. Work ethic is crucial. If you're, if you're already going into it lazy, then, you know, it, it, I, I, let's be honest, I can't push you to do anything you don't want to. No. Yeah. And as, as a manager once said about talent and this issue, Never ever want it more than your client. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. ever. Yeah. Sam, thank you so much for doing Rich. this. I really appreciate no, it. No, no, no. Thank you. Thank Honor you. again. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, this is Rich Ezra at Mobu TV. Thanks so much for watching this episode. We'd love to get your comments, so be sure to leave them below. And make sure that you like and share the video as well. If you like this video, or if you're new to Mubu TV, we'd love to have you subscribe. So be sure to hit the subscribe button below. And also, make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you can get notified by email every time we put out a new episode. And finally, we need to hear from you. We need to know what kinds of content and guests you're interested in at Mubu TV. So keep it tuned to your trusted source, Mubu TV. Music, business, television.